Hi everyone, welcome to our channel, Salmon and Cod Playtime. Um, today I want to talk to you all about cooking. Lately, and one thing my kiddos love to help me with is cooking in the kitchen. Whether it's making brownies or cookies, last time we made cookies, we made sugar cookies, and they were amazing. But in order to make those cookies, we had to measure out the ingredients. And a lot of people don't know how to measure ingredients. And so that's what we're going to talk about today because it's all fractions, believe it or not. So when we measure our wet ingredients, and when I say wet ingredients, I mean like anything that you can splash in. If you can splash in it, it's a wet ingredient. Like you can splash in water, you can splash in milk, you can splash around in milk, you can splash around in oil, you might not want to, but you can. Anything that can splash is a liquid. That's something that would go into a wet liquid cup, okay? And measuring cups normally look like this, and they have little lines on them. And a lot of people don't know what those lines mean. And so today, that's what we're going to talk about because everybody needs to know how to use a measuring cup. So we've got measuring cup number one here. And this measuring cup is divided into two different parts, which is why I put up here in the corner the number two. Because this cup has one part down here and one part right here. Okay, both of these cups, these, blah, 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 I can't talk, wow. Both of these uh, parts are the exact same size. The number one is the same size as the number two. This just shows that this is one part of your cup. This is the second part of your cup, and that's divided into two parts. So if we went back to our board. Remember, we were doing fractions. If I put a two down here at the bottom and put our fraction line, that's going to tell you this cup has two different parts to it, okay? Now, what happens if I fill up, let me get a different marker here. What happens if I fill this cup, if I fill up one part of this cup, okay? One part of this cup, we're going to fill it up. We're going to pour some liquid in here, and that liquid is going to fill up that first part of that cup, okay? We got it all all filled up there. Well, one, I get this, one of my two parts of this cup is filled. That's how that would look. Okay, I'm going to put this right here so you can see it. That's how that would look. It would be one of my two parts of the cup is filled. Okay, now what happens if I come through and I fill up both? Oh, that's also called a half, by the way. When you have one over two, that's called a half. Because half the cup or half your object is full. What well, if I came over and I then filled up the second part of this? Bloop, bloop, bloop. Just like that. And my whole cup was filled. Both parts of my cup were filled. Well, then I would have two over two. Two of my parts of my cup are filled and I only had two parts. When you have a number that's the same on the top, or a fraction, I'm sorry, a fraction, where the top is the exact same number as the bottom, it's going to equal the number one. And why that is, is because it means that your whole one object is filled. It means the object that you have that was broken up into pieces, the whole thing is filled, or the whole, you have the whole thing. You're not missing any pieces to this, okay? All righty. Good deal. We will go over that again here in a minute. Put that right there for now. Let's erase this off. Let's erase, erase, erase. Now, sometimes your measuring cup will have lines, and your cup will be divided into three different sections. Okay, right here I put the number three because this cup is divided into three sections. One, two, three. Okay, so down here on our board we're going to put three because our cup is divided into three sections. So I've got the number three over here. What happens if we fill this first part of the cup right here? Well, then one part of our three cups, or three cup of our cup would be filled, okay? 
because this one cup is divided into three parts. So one part of the three parts is filled. That's what the one third means. Okay? What if we filled two parts of the cup? Just like that. Okay? We take that one off and we put a two on here. And that's called two thirds. Because two parts out of the three are filled. So if something, if a recipe tells you that you need two thirds of something, like two thirds cup of milk, well, you would know that you would fill up two parts out of three on your measuring cup. Okay? That's how easy it is. What if we came through here and we filled up the rest of this cup? Well, now, if you look at that, our whole cup is filled. Our entire cup is filled. So how many do we have? If the number on the top and the number on the bottom are the same, it's going to equal the number one because now we have one full cup of liquid. I always say milk because I like milk. But one full cup of milk is what we now have. We have one full cup. So anytime the number is the same on the top and the bottom, it's going to equal the number one. And that's why, because you have all the parts. You have your one object. Okay? All righty. Let's go one more time. Here we go. This measuring cup is normally the main measurements that you would see on a measuring cup. Most measuring cups are broken into four parts. One, two, three, four. Okay? This one's broken up into four again. One, two, three, and four. So let's change our fraction here if we can. Let's change this up. What's the number that's going to go down here on the bottom? Can you tell me? I hope you got it right. Let's see. It's going to be the number four because this cup is broken into four parts. Okay? Now, what happens if we fill this first part of the cup? What number would go up here? That's right. The number one. We'd have one fourth of a cup. Okay? It's called having one fourth because one part of your four is filled. Okay? That's one fourth. Now, what happens if we come through and we fill it all the way up to here? Well, now two parts out of our four are filled. So we're going to put what number right here? That's right, the number two. So now two fourths of our cup is filled. Now let me tell you something really cool. Two fourths also could look like this. It could also look like one half. Well, why is that? Why are those equal? Because if I pull back over here, our one-half measuring cup, and I erase this right here, just like this, that's the same amount. Both of these cups are filled to the same part. Okay? When this cup was broken into four, or this cup was broken into four parts, and two of them were filled, half the cup is filled right now. Just like this one, half the cup is filled. Therefore, two-fourths is the exact same as one-half, which is really, really cool. Okay? So that was just a little bonus that I threw in there. Let's come back to this cup. Okay? What happens if I fill this cup a little more? Let's fill it just a little more. Droop, all the way to there. It's all the way to this third line. There's line number one, line number two, Line number three, what happens when we fill it to the third line? I always got to turn this around to draw my three, so I did it the right way. Now how much do we have? Three fourths. Three fourths of this cup is now filled. Look at that. That's so good. You guys are doing great. And the last one, real quick. If I can write upside down. If we filled this last part of the cup. See that? And all the cup was filled. We would have four fourths of our cup filled, and we know that four fourths equals what? One. One whole cup is full now. One whole cup is full. You have filled this entire cup. So one cup, over here, sorry, <laughs> one cup is filled. Okay? You guys did great today. I'm so proud of you. 
later on we will come back and we will do other cups, okay? Alright, I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye!